the Lubakai Western Robotics team has been competing in first events since 2010 and is led by Coach Sam Black. Um, this group will be presenting about engineering notebook tips for the team. Um, and um, they will also be addressing CAD and its use in FTC. So I will hand this over to Sam Black. Thank you. Hello. Uh, all right, so uh, I had a bunch of some of our leaders who weren't gonna be able to be here today, but did work ahead of time and uh, put together a few things for us uh, on uh, engineering notebooks from their uh, time and, uh, and their experiences. And so uh, here's the first part on their notebook tips. Oops, wait. My Sorry name is that. Helen Shea. We are Lava Kai Western Robotics, and we compete with FRC Team 4717 and FTC Teams 4859, 4894, 4895, and 13826. We'll be presenting a video we made uh, on the engineering notebook that will give you some tips about uh, what and what not to put in the engineering notebook, as well as different ways that you can. Uh, take notes for your engineering notebook and just general tips to help you become more efficient with your engineering notebook. For formatting of your engineering notebook, when making your engineering notebook, your formatting should remain consistent. So you can either do it as typed or you can do it as handwritten. So whenever you are considering which format to do it in, typed, I prefer because you can, you know, like carry your phone around and jot down some notes and then you just have all your data. So whenever you go down to make your final copy, you can pick and choose what you want to put in there and write it down with like the highest quality. But if you have it handwritten, it's, it's just not as easy to manipulate. Uh, but again, you could just have a ton of like sticky notes or a, a separate notebook that you take notes in to, and then write your final copy off of that. So it's preference, but um, some sections you should include in your notebook is an introduction to your team. You should also have bios for individual team members, a table of contents, a section on mentors and leads, outreach and sponsors, design and planning, and a programming section. You should also definitely, definitely have a daily log section. So this can be helpful to uh, kind of show your judges sort of like a, a catalog of what your team has done and like your uh, team bios you can kind of maybe have like little running jokes that you have just to show some character that your team has and that you're not just like stick figures that are getting judged that you actually have personality and they can kind of see that through your engineering notebook and then daily schedules and stuff is always important to help the judges see that you're responsible with all of your work uh, pictures definitely do more than you think. So pictures will give good examples of what happened through the season and they provide really good visuals for the judges that are more useful than trying to explain everything just through writing. It also makes things and maybe people more recognizable to someone who is unfamiliar to your team as judges will probably be. Uh, so these are always good to show, like, again, character in your team because you can take a ton of pictures of your robot to show the progression, maybe of like a catalog from beginning to finish of your robot and some of your designs. And if you use CAD, maybe some screenshots. And you can also put pictures of you and your team kind of hanging out to show the judges that you're a robotics team, but you're also a family because first is like a family. We always need to stick together. Mm -hmm. For what you're documenting, you want you want to make sure to document pretty much everything. So you want to show your team's growth, you want to show off what you've learned, and you definitely want to know that mistakes are def uh, are okay. So this is almost going to be like a biography of your robot and your team's growth. This is always good to uh, show that you've put a lot of time into your robot. Because if you're just putting down that like, oh, here's a picture of our robot and we worked on it on this day, but you don't maybe explain what you did, 
uh, or show mistakes that you made, you won't be able to kind of convince the judges that you spent a lot of time on this. Now, if you have like today we installed this system and here's how it went and here's maybe some hiccups and how we could improve, that would show the judges that you're committed to learning as well as you've spent a lot of time working on your robot as well as your notebook. Uh, some questions that you may want to ask yourself when documenting is what is functioning well and what is failing? And this can apply to either your team or your robot. And what are ways in which you could solve or can problem solve certain issues? What changes have you made to your robot over the season? What are the engineering or programming ideas that you've come up with as a team? And what ways have you valued first robotics and STEM when making your robot? So this is always good because uh, some of the things that you create, you can kind of showcase it. So like if you figured out a, a new way to program your systems or your autonomous is really good, you can definitely highlight that. So the judges will see kind of your extra creativity. And uh, whenever you're asking stuff like what should go in the notebook, you should have a very detailed record, but you don't need to say like, uh, we, we ran out of nuts and bolts today, so we had to make a run to Home Depot. You just want to keep it strictly to progress and not like your grocery list. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So when you're making your notebook, you should not be scared of making a draft first if your thoughts are unorganized or if you need help putting things in the right order. So instead of writing in your notebook first, you should write it somewhere else to make your final more organized. So no team will ever start out perfect, just doesn't happen. And document design changes to your robot. Do not scratch things out messily in your final notebook. If there is a mistake, just make a line through it. It will be much neater. And this will help things, all of these things will help uh, you be more organized in your final copy. So this also goes back to uh, whenever you're talking about what medium you want to use, if you want to have it typed or handwritten, uh, because depending on that may depend on like if you all need to be together whenever you're writing it uh, versus if you had it all typed, you could all share a Google Doc and have a call or something to determine what your team wants to put in the notebook uh, versus having it handwritten where you can only kind of sit in your lab and work on it. You could kind of take this exercise outside and uh, don't be scared to add a little bit more than what you want because the judges always want to see that extra little bit of commitment that you gave over the season. So something that you might want to put in your notebook is your team's sustainability plan. So this will basically be about how your team will continue past just this one season. So this will include stuff like if you're training younger team members in key roles as members graduate out, and are there any plans for recruiting new members and what they are? And then does your team have a uh, a plan to recruit more mentors if necessary and how are you fundraising the cost of the next season this will include stuff like registration fees or new parts and how are you and your team leaving a legacy that will last beyond just this season so this is a, a very important part that can show the judges uh, how committed you are and how uh, how much thought you've put into this uh, versus like whenever you're training people to maybe take your role, whether you're graduating or moving to a different school to show that you want the legacy of your robotics team to live on. And that this is sort of like a little bit like a business that you have to fundraise and get enough money to pay for your uh, robot so that you're not like stranded and you can't compete because you've ran out of money. But you can show the judges that you've thought of all those scenarios to ensure that your robotics team is funded and has mentors to run it for the next few years. You also want to include stuff about sponsors and outreach. So you will want definitely want to document your sponsors and document your outreach opportunities, which can be really fun activities that you should you should definitely do because you want to spread robotics and STEM and first ideals to other children or younger kids, I guess. <laughs> And also outreach opportunities may be intimidating for student run teams like ours, but also keep in mind that it's extremely beneficial for those you're reaching out to. And it's much easier and a lot more fun than you think. Also remember to take pictures at these outreach opportunities because you know, 
they're really good for making your notebook more interesting and more detailed. Uh, so for sponsorships and outreaches, I don't have too much to add besides that they are really fun events to go with your teammates and to help out your local community. We went to a, uh, a local children's home. Uh, and since we are all nerds, we all had headsets that we brought. So we got to share the fun of VR with all of these kids. So it was a really fun time to uh, go and share with these kids as well as spend time with our teammates. Something else you will definitely want to include in your notebook are dates and timelines. So date every time that you write and make sure you write about big events. So not just screwing in, um, uh, screwing in things, but also like meet, meet, meets. And uh, you don't need to put every little thing in the timeline, just larger events for your team. And keep everything in like an organized timeline format. So these are really helpful to show the judges uh, how your robot was built. And maybe you can say like, oh, we finished a robot and we went to test it and this piece didn't work. So we had to take it off. Things like this definitely show your judges that it wasn't just a cookie cutter robot that worked from the box that you had to work on it and uh, make it the best that you could instead of just having, you know, the first try and it was, oh, it was a fail, move on that you took the time to go back and fix your mistakes and make it the best spot you can. So when you're making your notebook, you wanna make sure that you're labeling your notebook properly. This relates to having like a table of contents and this will also make your pages and sections easier to identify and to find. So make sure you have your team notebook on your notebook first. Judges will not look at your notebook without it. Labels will help things look much more organized and it won't only help the judges, but it could also help your team when they're working on the robot or the notebook to find needed information much faster. Judges only have a limited amount of time to look at your notebook, so this will make it a lot more easier for them to look at the pages that are more important. You also wanna make sure that in your daily logs that you're initialing every entry and make sure that the, the entire team is contributing to this notebook. So this is very important because like she was saying, the judges only have a certain amount of time. So if you want the judges to maybe look at a specific area a little bit more because it's more impressive or you spent more time on it, you can kind of maybe make that label a bit bigger and uh, stick out a little bit more. And a table of contents is really useful at the beginning of it so that if the judges need to find something specific, they can just open it up and see like, oh, this is page or tab whatever that you decide to label it as. And that can help the judges find the information that you need to win a lot faster. Yep. When your judges are reading your notebook, they should be able to rebuild your entire robot from scratch. So you can achieve this by uh, having good documentation and instruction along with the proper organization. Make sure you don't make it too complicated though and keep it simple. So uh, this is definitely helpful so the judges can see your work instead of just like having a robot show up and they don't know where it came from. And whenever you're uh, like writing down what you did for the day, uh, like if you're adding a system or just working on it, you can totally put pictures of like the robot as you're going through it. So like if you added a system, you can take the picture of, a ro of the robot either before or after and just kind of have like a, a picture with every entry so that the judges can have a visual representation of what you're writing about. So as we said before, changes should be recorded. Any change that occurs to your robot's design or plan or your team's growth or anything should be recorded. Any change in programming should also be recorded. And this will also go along with the timeline. So make sure you're recording all the changes to show your team's growth and the robot's growth. This is always good to show that you're not, you know, just showing up with the robot that you may or may not have actually built. Because whenever you have the robot put together and then you went to test it and maybe something didn't work, you need to rebuild the whole thing. Uh, if you show the judges that you had these different models and ideas, it'll definitely uh, help the judges see your team as a hardworking team instead of just, you know, like we show up on competition day and then we go home. Um, make sure that you have a section for your software and programming and it's not just all about the build. 
So certain in writing this section, you should have certain sections for uh, different control modules. An example would be a, one section for drive base and a different section for the lift. So make note of all your manipulators and how you are using them and how you've programmed them. This can show that you're not just, you know, like going on and copying down uh, your code from online because this can show that you understand how it works and that you understand how to use it whenever you are actually making notes about it. And you can, let's say you're using a, a different or cool function to help you with your autonomous. Uh, you could definitely highlight that in your in the section so the judges can see that you're not just a, another normal team, that you're out of the box. Like we've mentioned before, you can also put CAD stuff into your notebook. So if your team does use CAD, printing photos of the different mechanics will be a great way to show off your team's work. This could be easier than just trying to, to sketch your idea or robot. However, CAD itself may be more difficult to certain people. CAD may also look uh, CAD can also look more advanced than sketching, but it definitely takes time as well, and it depends on pers personal preference. So CADing may be a little bit harder to get into. One thing that it can kind of save you in is if you did forget to document or take as many pictures as you would have liked, if you have that final 3D model, you can kind of deconstruct it and take pictures of it as you're making it so that you're not just at the end of the season, you're like, oh, we have all this documentation, but we didn't have as much pictures as we wanted. So you can go back through and take those pictures that you need to fill in the blanks in your notebook. All right. Um, I can take a few questions uh, on the notebook really quick if uh, anybody has any. We have some questions. So um, one of the first questions that we have or um, that I have for you is, um, sorry, I had to pull up my sheet there. Um, what parts of the notebook do you think judges look at the most in your experience or your team's experience? Um, I, I know that uh, from some things that um, uh, I've overheard, one of the things that uh, really made one of our uh, notebooks stand out in the past has been like the ability to literally like I, they could the, um, could tell that they could, you know, like rebuild the robot just from that notebook itself. Um, so being able to line it out and uh, make those kinds of descriptions um, as clear and specific as possible is a, is a great thing and a, and a great benefit. Um, I think is one of the most, one of the biggest things because this is supposed to document the process that's, you know, one of the big things to be able to do is take the, take the notebook and maybe rebuild the whole project. True, very true. And, uh, you know, because of that being a process like that, um, what do you think the hardest part of keeping a, a good notebook is? And how does your team help to improve that process? Uh, I bel Mostly trying to I, i've i've worked hard over the years to try and build the um um the the culture of documenting you know maybe not daily but at least weekly somebody has to document what's been happening what's been going on and and just setting a regular schedule to be able to make those kinds of note those those kinds of note annotations and um taking pictures uh, uh, making sketches, you know, catting if necessary. Um, that's kind of what we, you know, that's, that's kind of the big things right there. And who is responsible for um, taking care of your notebook? Do you have a small group of students that do all of it or does every team member contribute to that? Well, I, I make sure I, I, I encourage every student to have some part of it. Um, I make them all be able to be responsible for it. You know, they all have to, to sign off on every on, on everything that goes in. Um, they all have to be able to identify what's happened. Um, it's really great for when 
I have like students who are part of just their after school program and are, you know, are only coming in after, you know, when other students aren't there to be able to like read up on what's going on and to um, see what's, what they've got and what they can, um, what they can make happen and put together, uh, you know, and what they need to work on next uh, to keep those kinds of communication open. Um, and so having, you know, and then they can document what they've, what they've accomplished so that when, you know, the next part of the team comes in, uh, that can, um, uh, you, you know, they, they can like hand off that way when they can't always communicate, you might say, directly all the time and everybody can't be there all the time. I agree. Good. Okay. Um, do you think uh, the notebook should be very large and detailed or small and simple? Um, honestly, it's all, you know, as I say, the devil's in the details. Um, you look at the ones that are posted for as the award-winning examples on the first website, and those that you see there are... You know, sometimes I've, you know, the, the PDFs are like, you know, hundred, you know, a hundred pages, you know, and to me, that's a little overwhelming to the students. Sometimes that's a little overwhelming, but I always tell my students that you need to, you need to tell the entire story of the robot. So, uh, you know, I think it needs to have, it needs to be as long as it needs to be in order to convey the story of your team and the story of your robot. Okay. Um, how would you divide the notebooks work with the whole team? Um, always make sure, you know, it, you, you, of course you've got the ones that go, I don't know how to write. I'm not going to write. I'm not going to make that happen. It's like, well, okay. So if you, if you can't write and you want, you know, you want to, you know, you can, you know, you can provide sketches. You're, you're part of the team that is putting together the, um, you, you know, if you're, if you're on build, then you need to know what you're building. So you need to have your plans. You can, you know, that can be part of your responsibilities and to be able to take pictures and uh, make those kinds of, of annotations and such. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a matter of, you know, just, you know, putting it on the mall and, you know, I, for, the, for the kids in the class, it's easy for me to give like a notebook grade and, you know, I've had times when, you know, one student said, well, I put everything in the notebook and it's like, yeah, this is a team grade though. And nobody else put anything in. So the whole team got graded down about that. And they're like, that's not fair. I'm like, no, this is a team. And that's the way teams work. And so at that point, it's like, if you're doing all the work, you're not part of a team anymore. So you need to encourage everyone else to be active and be part of it and sometimes that that really impacts and helps those those type a kids who are like i don't I, you know i know everything and i'm going to build it all myself and i'm going to do it all and you can't you know you can just sit there and watch me it's like when you start like downgrading them no matter how good it is it's like you have to teach them to work as a team and they have to make sure that they are also you know they are responsible for helping to make the, make everything more well-rounded as it were okay when you start a new season should the notebook reflect on last year's experience um for some level of continuity in terms of outreach and such i say yes as for the, in my situation you know my my kids may rotate from year to year um, as to whether they're, you know, on one team or the other team or whether they're, you know, they, they've graduated or, or graduated from being just on FTC and are now, men, you know, part of our FRC team mentoring the FTC, all the FTC teams. So that really, you know, from one year to the next, each robot in each competition and each design, ses, you know, process is, is all brand new. Um, I'm, you know, from year to year, I would talk about, you know, that we've, you know, 
the Lubbock High Robotics has been around for so many years. We have participated in FTC for so many years. You know, talk about that longevity, talk about outreach, but when it comes to the specific parts of the design and, and the problem solving process and everything like that, that's all year to year. Okay, great.